Bhagavatam class on behalf of Eskon Vrindavan, thank you very much for coming. We're going to be doing verse 39 of the 12th chapter of the 8th canto of Granth Raj Srimad Bhagavatam. Granth Raj Srimad Bhagavatam ki Konu metitaren maya Vishakta Stvadrate Puma Tamastana Vistrajatim Bhavan Dustaram Kratatma Bhi Ka what? No, indeed. Me, my. Atiret can surpass. Mayam, illusory energy. Vishakta, attracted to material sense enjoyment. Twatrate, Except for you, Poman, person, Tan, such conditions, Tan, unto the unto the materially attached persons, Visrajatim, in surpassing. Bhavan, Bhavan, reactions of material activities. activities. Dustaram, very difficult to surmount. Akrata Atma Bhi, by persons unable to control their senses. Translation. My dear Lord Shambhu, who within this material world but you can surpass my illusory energy. People are generally attached to the sense enjoyment and conquered by its influence. Indeed, in the influence of material nature is very difficult for them to surmount. Please repeat. My dear Lord Shambhu. Who within this material world? But you can surpass my illusory energy. People are generally attached to sense enjoyment and conquered by its influence. Indeed, the influence of material nature is very difficult to very difficult for them to surmount thank you purport by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shri prabhupad shri prabhupad ki of the three chief demigods brahma vishnu and maheshwara all but vishnu are under the influence of Maya. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, they are described as Mai, which means under Maya's influence. But even though Lord Shiva associates with Maya, he is not influenced. The living entities are affected by Maya. But although Lord Shiva apparently associates with Maya, he is not affected. In other words, all living entities within this material world except Lord Shiva are swayed by Maya. 
Lord Shiva is therefore neither Vishnu Tattva nor Jeev Tattva. He is in between the two. End of the purport. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manovishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurat Shai Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Gadadhar Shivasadi Gaurabhakt Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama राम राम हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Thank you, Hare Krishna. So this chapter, chapter 12, called Mohini Murti Bewilders Lord Shiva is the last chapter in the pastime of the churning of the ocean of milk. The pastime of churning of the ocean of milk started at chapter 6. So from chapter 6 onwards, we've been hearing this description of the churning of the ocean of milk. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. At the end of the 12th chapter, this pastime will end. There's a very beautiful verse in the end that uh, signifies the importance of reading, studying, or hearing this pastime. Will never go fruitless. Every devotee should hear this pastime of churning of the ocean of milk, six chapters worth. And in this section, there are four different incarnations that the Supreme Lord takes for this one pastime. Churning of the milk of ocean is one pastime that is completed by the Supreme Lord taking four different incarnations. So the first incarnation in this pastime was uh, first one, Ajita. Ajita was the first one to take incarnation for this pastime, one of the four. And number two, I'll give others a chance. Number two is Lord Korma, Korma Avatar. And then there's number three, Dan one three. We know you're clever. We already said, please give others a chance. <laughs> number three is Dhanvantri. And number four is this one right in front of you. Mohini Murti. Mohini Murti Avatar Ki. 
so just before ending the past times as mohini murti the supreme lord attracts lord shiva to come and see the incarnation of mohini murti because when the mohini murti takes incarnation or appears lord shiva is not in the picture he is not there with the demigods it's the demigods and the demons their assembly the two assemblies and lord shiva doesn't go to fight the demons on the side of the uh, uh, demigods or anything so he remains aloof so when the incarnation took place of the mohini murti and the mohini murti distributed very cleverly and nicely distributed all the nectar to all the demigods and protected all of that nectar from the demons the past time of uh, that part ended but lord shiva heard the news somebody sent him an a whatsapp message that there is the most beautiful incarnation of lord vishnu that you have ever seen so one of the demigods probably informed lord shiva and lord shiva developed a desire to have darshan of mohini murti so he takes his whole entourage his uh, disciples his followers his uh, pupil as you would say in english are called in sanskrit they are called ganas gana the ganas the ganas are ghosts some people with half the body some all kinds of um special creatures who nobody would give protection to lord shiva being ashutosh he gives protection to all of them so all they all take shelter of him all the ganas and these ganas are very special people in terms of you see any one of them you will be scared <laughs> just seeing one of them is enough to scare you oh what did i just see and devi parvati is also accompanying him to go have darshan of the incarnation of lord vishnu as mohini murti so with this entourage they go to see uh, mohini murti they have uh, and mohini murti is now already not in the mohini murti form they see the form of vishnu and of course uh, lord shiva goes there and speaks like 10 15 20 verses to glorify the glories of lord vishnu and then uh, expressing the desire to have darshan of the lord as mohini murti and now in this verse several verses um, up and down lord vishnu is now speaking to lord shiva in turn glorifying lord shiva it is lord shiva who glorifies lord vishnu and now it's lord vishnu's turn to glorify lord shiva so that is why he is saying here my dear lord shambhu who within this material world but you can surpass my illusory energy now lord vishnu is just about to get him <laughs> into this uh, rope of the illusory energy because he is going to give him darshan as mohini murti and lord shiva is going to lose all his senses 
and going to run after the Mohini Murthy as if, <laughs> uh, just as a simple lusty person or a lusty elephant running behind a she-elephant forgetting everything else in the world just sees the she-elephant and nothing else. So, Lord Vishnu is saying, who can surpass my illusory energy? People generally attached to the self's enjoyment and conquered by its influence, people are generally attached to sense enjoyment. And Lord Shiva, of course, is not really attached to sense enjoyment. He is not really into sense enjoyment. He is always sitting there chanting his japa and always uh, happy to uh, save the world, save the, the creatures, save the, the, the most fallen. And in this pastime, he has just saved all of the demigods by drinking all the poison that came out of the ocean of milk, so he is the big savior and in the end he is also the big annihilator, meaning does the service of annihilating the whole world when it is time to annihilate. So, indeed the influence of material nature is very difficult for them to surmount. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Devi Heshya Gurumai Mama Maya Duratya Mame Vaya Prapadyante Maya Metam Tarantite. Even Krishna himself says Mama Maya Duratya. It is not easy to come to overcome my Maya. Not eh, it's very difficult. Duratya, very, very difficult. Of course, he also tells the way, Mame vaya prapadyante maya metam tarantite, those who worship me will be able to cross the maya. So, Lord Shiva, of course, is always worshipping Lord Krishna, so he should be able to. And Lord Vishnu is saying that for others, it is not so possible. So that was the translation, now getting into the purport. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada mentions that there are three chief demigods, Brahma, Vishnu and Maheshwar. But except Vishnu, all others are under the influence of Maya. Not all the time they are not in Maya, but they are subject to falling into the trap of Maya. Like in the Brahat Bhagavat Amrita, part one, you hear the pastime of uh, Narad Muni going out to find a devotee who is the most blessed, who has had the most uh, blessings, most uh, blessed devotee by the Supreme Lord. The chapter is known, Finding the Essence of the Supreme Lord's Mercy, who is the recipient of the Supreme Lord's Mercy, the biggest, the highest recipient of the Supreme Lord's Mercy. Who would that be? That would be the best devotee. So when he goes to find that devotee, he ends up in Kashi. Kashi is now known as Varanasi. And he finds at the Dashashwamed Ghat, there is a devotee a, from a Brahmana family and he is doing a very big, very nice puja. Kirtan, Prashad distribution, invited everyone very nicely doing all this. So, Narad Muni simply thinks, oh, this devotee must be very blessed by the Supreme Lord. So, maybe he is the most blessed devotee or he is the one who has the 
who is the recipient of the Lord's mercy. But when he approaches that Brahmana, he says, oh no, not me. I, you know, I am so limited. You just saw me doing all this, you know, the opulent worship and everything else. But, you know, I can't really do this. I, the most I can do is do this once a year. One day a year only I do this. Don't be so impressed by what, by my actions. Because it's only one day a year. If you really want to find a devotee who is the highest recipient of the Lord's mercy, then you should go to our local king. He does more opulent worship than this every day. Every day of the week, every day of the year. Ekadashi, everything. There is no holidays. Even on New Year's Day and Christmas Day, he does the same kind of worship. So, Narad Muni goes there. And the king says, no, 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 no. I, me, I am very limited. You know, I have a very short life. I, there, there is only so little opulence that I can worship the Supreme Lord with. I am basically embarrassing the Supreme Lord. He is the Lord of all three universes. And by me doing this little piddly seva, I am basically embarrassing him. So if you really want to find somebody who can really worship the Supreme Lord in a grand way, and you think that person would be the biggest recipient of the Lord's mercy, that would be Indra. Go and see Indra. And Indra, when Narad Muni goes to see Indra, Indra says, no way. Me, I am the biggest dushta you will ever find. You know, Krishna came here to my abode and his wife wanted the Parijata tree and I refused. You know, I refused Krishna. And he was so kind that he forced me. <laughs> and I was so dull-headed that I went to fight him. When he forced his way to take the Parijata tree, I went to fight him. I am so ridiculously useless person that, you know, I am not that person. And when Krishna was doing his Bal Leela in Vrindavan, he tried to stop my worship. He stopped my worship and told the Brajvasis to worship the Govardhan hill instead. I took offense to that. I got mad at Krishna. I attacked him with all of my clouds. I even called the Samvartaka and attacked Krishna with full force. And you know, when Krishna defeated me and I went to beg forgiveness, he did not even scold me. He just lovingly pardoned me like that. Okay, sure, it's okay, go. <laughs> I am the biggest hypocrite you will ever find. I am not a devotee at all. You want to find a devotee? Go to Brahma. Brahma is the greatest devotee. Because in front of me, Brahma is so great. I am just Indra for this Manvantar. In one day of Brahma, there's going to be 14 of me. 14 different people will become Indras in one day of Brahma. So, and in that way, Brahma lives for 100 years. So now imagine, what is the comparison <laughs> between Brahma and me? I am absolutely nothing in front of Brahma. So now Narad Muni is convinced, oh my God, Brahma, 
Brahma is my dad. I never thought of him. He is the biggest recipient of the Lord's mercy. And he goes running to Brahma and Brahma says, no way. Me? I am so dull. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to uh, imagine when Krishna killed Agasura. I knew nobody could kill Agasura. So, in my uh, false ego, I went to test Krishna. When I went to see Krishna and I noticed that other little boys are telling him, Krishna, open up your mouth. I'm going to give you a rasgulla in your mouth. And they put grass in his mouth. The next one comes and says, close your eyes, open up your mouth. My mother sent a sandesh for you. And he puts a flower in Krishna's mouth. Of course, Krishna says, patram fushpam falam toyam, but you don't literally feed flowers to Krishna in his mouth. This is ridiculous. So I thought that this boy is not this boy cannot be he is being fooled by little children he cannot be the supreme personality of godhead no way and due to my uncontrolled false ego and sense enjoyment i went to test krishna i stole all his boyfriends when he closed his eyes the next time and i also stole all of his calves and hit them somewhere in the cave to find out what this little boy will do now who supposedly kill Agasura. What's he going to do? How is he going to find his boyfriends? And Krishna, being the Supreme Personality of God, had expanded himself into all of those boys, all of those calves and their mothers were only so much more happier to get these expansions because the expansions are directly Krishna. And the, the, the cows are giving more milk now and the mothers are having more affection, more love, more vatsalya towards their own same children that they had before because now these children were the expansions of the Supreme Lord. So when I came back and I saw, oh, everything is the same in Vrindavan, nothing changed. And when I looked carefully, I saw, oh my God, all of these calves and all of these boyfriends that I stole, Krishna expanded himself into all of them. And I felt foolish. And when I went to offer obeisances to Krishna and ask for forgiveness in one minute. He forgave me. He let me go. Like you don't chastise too much very young children. The younger the children, the less you're going to chastise, right? Older the children, the more they get chastisement. So, if you don't chastise, you thought of him as a little child. What are you going to do, chastise a little child? Okay, you accept that you made a mistake. All right, go away. Play around. <laughs> and you don't even say, don't do it again. <laughs> Krishna didn't even tell me to not do it again. He just got rid of me. So, there is no way. I am not the greatest recipient of Krishna's mercy. I am really full of sense enjoyment. I am full of false ego. I am in Maya. Really, I am in Maya because I could not see Krishna right in front of my face. He was sitting there and I did not believe that that was Krishna. I am in Maya. So that is the illusory energy that we are talking about here. Srila Prabhupada is 
talking about. The illusory energy affects every living entity including the demigods and including even Brahma. Even Brahma. It is, this is called Brahma Vimohan Leela. Vimohan is, the, is covered in the illusory energy, covered in Maya. He cannot see Krishna. Krishna is right in front of his face. He is being told, this is Krishna. No, no. This little boy, he can't be Krishna. <laughs> Other little children are coming around and throwing grass in his mouth. How can this be the Supreme Personality of Godhead? He could be anything but the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And um, Brahma guides his son, Narad Muni, who is out at the quest of finding the best devotee. He says, if you want to find the best devotee, you should go to Lord Shiva. He is undoubtedly the best devotee on this earth. You will not have to go any further. Go to the Kalash and meet Lord Shiva right now. Lord Shiva is so glorious, he is the only one who can give mukti. He is considered to be almost the same level as Lord Vishnu. He is not influenced by Maya. You know, at the time of the churning of the ocean, ocean of milk, he drank the whole halahul poison and he lived. So, he is very merciful. He is the first Vaishnava. Who could be a, a better devotee than the first Vaishnava? He is it. He is number one. If you are looking for the best devotee, the highest recipient of Krishna's mercy, that's Shiva. Go and declare. So, Narad Muni goes to see Lord Shiva. We're coming to this uh, Maya's influence on Brahma and Shiva in Shiva's own words. Now, Narad Muni goes to see Lord Shiva and starts performing the Aarti, you are the best, you are the best devotee of the Lord, I found you, I found you, I've been looking and this and that and um, Lord Shiva closes both his ears. So I don't want to hear any, anything about this. What makes you think that I am the best devotee, I am the best recipient of the Supreme Lord's mercy? So. Uh, Narad Muni sings all the glories of uh, Lord Shiva that in every, almost every incarnation that Lord Vishnu takes, he comes and worships you, Lord Shiva. He comes and in several incarnations, Lord Vishnu himself has asked you for boons. You have blessed Lord Vishnu in so many of incarnations such as Parshuram, whose devotee was Parshuram? Shiva's devotee. But who is Parshuram? Is Vishnu Tattva. So, when he starts talking like that, Bra uh, Shiva opens up his ears and goes to close Narad Muni's mouth. <laughs> Another way of saying, shut up. <laughs> Don't speak like that. That is my false ego that I allow Lord Vishnu to ask me for boons and I give him blessings. I am really nothing in front of him. I am just as low as one can get. The Supreme Lord has given me so much mercy, He has given me so much power and I misuse it all the time. You know what happened when Banasura was playing the Murdanga for me? 
I liked his murdanga playing so much and I danced and danced and danced for hours, days, weeks, months, years together on his playing of murdanga. And when he asked me for a boon, I told him, anything you want, I will give you. He asked me for 1,000 hands. And I was so naive, I gave him 1,000 hands. And now, not realizing that this was a demon, what would he use the 1,000 hands for? He started beating people up. Nobody could stand in front of him. He was going around fighting with, fighting with the mountains and crushing them into powder. Because of his 100 arms and so much power, he was full of false ego. And he came to me one day, and complained that Lord Shiva, you have given me 1,000 arms, but you haven't given me a, 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 an opponent that I can use my 1,000 arms on. <laughs> Lord Shiva beats his head. <laughs> I gave you the 1,000 arms to play the murdanga, not to beat people up. <laughs> beat the murdanga. <laughs> you want to beat someone, beat the murdanga. But if you really want an opponent like that, sure, I will grant you. <laughs> I will give you Krishna. You can fight with him with your 1,000 arms. And this Banasura appeared in the same area, in the same time as Dwarkadish. And um, Banasura had a daughter, Usha, who really liked one of uh, Krishna's grandsons, the oldest, Aniruddha, and she was a powerful demoness. So, because she liked Aniruddha, she just sent her servants and have Aniruddha kidnapped and brought to her bedroom <laughs> directly through the window, not even using the door. And when Banasura found out, Banasura attacked Aniruddha. And Krishna went to fight Banasura. And because I was bound by my blessings to Banasura, I had to go and fight on the side of Banasura, fight against Krishna. And he could have killed me. He could have shot an arrow and finished me. But he was still so merciful on me when I'm standing in the battlefield against him. And he was so merciful on Banasura that out of the 1,000 arms that I gave him, Krishna only killed, only cut off 996 arms, left him with four arms, made him look like a four-arm Vakunta resident just because he was my devotee. He is so merciful on me and my devotee and look at me. I am so full of false ego. I go and fight against Krishna. And he didn't chastise me. Why are you coming fight with me? Another time, there was a, I had a great devotee whose name was Basmasur. Basmasur wanted a boon from me that whosoever had, he would touch his palm of the hand, his head would explode and would die immediately. And soon as Basmasur got this boon from me, he, ha he started having an eye for my wife Parvati and wanted to put his head, hand on my head. <laughs> and I had to run all over the place to protect myself from my devotee <laughs> because he wanted to put his hand on my head. 
So I kept running and running and running all over the place and nobody was able to protect me until I came to the Supreme Lord. And the Supreme Lord said, Wish, uh, Shiva, no problem. Just hide yourself in this kutia. I'm going to stand outside and I'm going to protect you. And the Supreme Lord is in the form of a little eight-year-old boy. <laughs> and he stops Basmasura. Hey, Basmasura, where are you going? So I'm looking for Lord Shiva. I said, really? You're looking for Lord Shiva? And Lord Shiva is running from you? So this doesn't sound like a real Lord Shiva. You think Lord Shiva will run away from you? So the whole story starts to make sense to Basmasur. And Lord Vishnu convinces Basmasur, this was a fake Lord Shiva and the blessing he gave you was fake. You don't believe me? Tie it on your own head. Put your hand on your own head and you will not burn to ashes. And he tried. And Shiva got protected. <laughs> so, I am like a child. And the Supreme Lord protects me all the time. I make mistakes. I am full of mistakes. And the Supreme Lord is always there to protect me. There is no way that I am the biggest recipient of the Supreme Lord's mercy. If you want to find the biggest recipients of the Supreme Lord's mercy, you should go to the Vaikuntha and find the Vaikuntha Vasis. And so on, the, this pastime goes to uh, Prahlad Maharaj and so on. <coughs> But anyway, this is all I wanted to tell you in this limited time about this. These are all the examples that I gave of uh, Brahma not being perfect, Lord Shiva also not being perfect. They do make mistakes and they accept and this is coming from their own words. Whereas there is no pastime ever in any scripture that will prove that Lord Vishnu ever made a mistake or made a misjudgment or was influenced by Maya at all. So having said that, <coughs> I would like to open up for questions and comments. Any questions or comments? I have a habit of speaking a lot. I could speak for the rest of the day and night, but I'd like to hear from you. Any questions or comments? Yes. Lord Shiva is worshipped all over India as supreme by the Shaivites. Um, and we respect all these temples and Lord Shiva is the greatest Vaishnava. Yes. But you just mentioned many times how he falls into the illusory energy. So how do we reconcile that? So how do we reconcile? Yeah, I'm trying to repeat it for the mic. How do we reconcile that the that the that Lord Shiva is considered to be the supreme and worshipped in so many big temples and so on, but of course he is not the supreme and and he accepts it and 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 all of that. Yes, there are. Um, three kinds of transcendentalists. One are Vaishnavas, the other are Shaivites, and the third are called the Shaktyas. The Shaktyas are the worshippers of Devi, the Shaivites are worshippers of Vishnu, and the Vaishnavas are of course worshippers of Vishnu or any form or incarnation of Vishnu. So there is always the three, although one is the true supreme and the others are kind of supreme. Shakti is very, very powerful. Shakti is actually Parvati or Durga, who is the wife of Lord Shiva. 
and she is also the material nature of the the uh, uh, maya the illusory energy she is very powerful but she is the power of krishna she is not individually powerful she is the power of somebody and that is krishna krishna uses her as his power and does everything most of everything materially through her shiva on the other other side is also known to be the supreme by the shaivites and there are some scriptures that would also kind of in a way uh, hint that and the reason for that is there are three modes of nature and three kinds of puranas you heard that there are 18 puranas so the puranas six of the the 18 puranas are in the mode of ignorance the six out of the 18 puranas are in the mode of passion and the six out of the 18 puranas are in the mode of goodness so the ones that are in mode of goodness of course all the time confirm the supremacy of lord vishnu the others also but sometimes they hint the supremacy of others uh, like uh, devi and lord shiva so that is why this is always the case it's always been that way and it is three ways for three kinds of people to go so if you are in mode of goodness you go towards goodness you want you are in passion and you want to pursue passion then you go towards the devi side you are in mode of ignorance and you want to pursue ignorance you go towards uh, lord shiva's side lord shiva is the the most uh, merciful on the most fallen and he is easily pleased he is ashutosh so so many people gravitate towards him because everybody wants everything easy i want prayer not shreya you understand the prayer and the shreya prayer is i do this now and i get result from doing this pious activity or whatever today or tomorrow or at least in this lifetime where a shreya is i do this uh, out of goodness of my heart or to achieve uh, some kind of krishna prema and i leave the result up to krishna i don't want anything i i don't demand i don't ask whatever krishna pleases will do for, do for me kita janam ho joy chato har give me a birth as a uh, <coughs> a a creep uh, creepy crawly like, like as an insect the devotee says give me a birth as an insect if you if you so please but give me a birth as an insect in a devotee's home so that is shreya so most people who are into shreya will gravitate towards vishnu and uh those people who are um looking for quick easy result who is easiest to pre- please i go to them so that's why many people go to lord shiva lord shiva has very many good qualities although he is uh, representing ignorance but he himself is not in ignorance he is in complete uh, sattva so uh, many people get attracted to him but he is not the supreme 
you heard from himself. He would never, ever consider himself to be the supreme. Otherwise, why would he be chanting Lord Vishnu's names? <laughs> Does that kind of... Any other question or comment? Any other question or comment, please? Nothing else? Okay. Thank you very much. Jagat Guru Shula Prabhupada Ki Grantra Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki Nitai Gaur Premanande